indicating the range of foods that people can eat on a well-formulated ketogenic diet. And again, it shows the carbs in the 5 to 10% range. Um, but it includes the fact that we encourage people to eat uh, uh, non-starchy vegetables contributing uh, in the range of uh, 10 to 15 grams of, of total carbs. Um, uh, and you know, that varies from, uh, from Brussels sprouts and kale, which are fairly high, to, to lettuce which is quite, and spinach, which is quite low. But typically, we have people eating four or five servings of, of non-starchy vegetables per day. Um, we add berry fruits, which includes avocado and tomato, as well as berries. The uh, reason we have called those berry fruits is they're in the 5 to 10% by weight sugar or carb range in, in, in prepared form. And that 5 to 10 grams means that you can have 100 grams of berry fruit per day. It doesn't mean 100 grams of berries, 100 grams of avocado, and 100 grams of tomato. It's in total. So we're talking about things which are a garnish in the diet. Um, and that's, those are there for not just the volume. And by the way, you can put you know, olive oil or you know, saute your, your cauliflower or, your, or kale or things in, in olive oil. And, and that's a way of getting good fat in, in the diet. So you take some of this stuff here and you mix it with some of this stuff here and then cook it together. So it's a vehicle to get fat in its volume. It it's, uh, adds appeal and taste appeal to the foods. Um, and then nuts and seeds uh, we like because they're portable and, uh, and quite satisfying when people eat them. And they contain a considerable amount of magnesium, um, which again is the nutrient that, that people benefit from. And the other source of magnesium is anything that's leafy green and pointed at the sun contains magnesium because chlorophyll, which is the chemical, the, you know, the, the, the key chemical in photosynthesis, has to have magnesium coordinated in the middle of the molecule. So if you wonder where, where to find magnesium, it's either in the things that are growing and pointed at the sun, or it's the nuts and seeds that are designed to have that starter, startup that makes that green plant come out of the ground. We have this bizarre, had this bizarre reality TV thing in the United States called The Biggest Loser. And uh, Kevin Hall, who I don't agree with most of the time, uh, did a study of people five years after they went through that show and showed that with, an ex with extreme caloric restriction and exercise, they could see a metabolic impairment five years later that represented about a four to 500 calorie per day decrement in energy expenditure and, and that was based on a reduced uh, expenditure per kilogram of lean body mass. It didn't mean that they had atrophied muscles. The muscles they had had a lower metabolic rate. So those muscles had been essentially, not, it, it had suffered long-term damage. I won't say permanent, but long-term damage. So the reason we feed to satiety is we want people to follow their internal signals. Uh, and we don't think that we see that, but again, we're. You know, I've done smaller studies you know, out to two years. So tachycardia and heart racing. One is um, if people exercise without maintaining adequate fluid and sodium intake, they'll start out hypovolemic. So their circulating volume will be contracted to begin with. And as soon as you expend 100 calories, that will warm your body from 37 to 38 degrees centigrade. You'll vasodilate, and the heart is going to have not enough fluid, and, and it'll, you'll have you'll have a, a tachycardic response because there's inadequate circulatory, circulatory volume. That's easily corrected with a liter of fluid and a, a cup of bouillon. But if people are magnesium depleted, and particularly people with diabetes, we are surprised by how frequently we see magnesium, signs of magnesium depletion. And that's muscle fasciculations, little twitches, and it's muscle cramps, um, and it's persistent hypokalemia, persistent, you know, even if you give people extra potassium, their blood levels stay low. But magnesium depletion in the heart leads to tachydysrhythmia. And hopefully people will notice that early on and, and get corrected as opposed to having a, a really serious one that uh, is a non-perfusing rhythm. Uh, so I would be worried about it. And the first thing I'd go is fluid, volume, and sodium. And if that doesn't help people with the problem, then, then I would. Uh, and again, my, my favorite test for magnesium depletion, because the blood test is terrible because almost all your magnesium is inside your muscles or inside your bones, very little in the blood, so it doesn't accurately reflect your status. So I just do a, a simple deep tendon reflex test. And if it's hyperreflexic, uh, that's a, a sign that, that uh, a person may have uh, inadequate intracellular magnesium. But for some reason, people with, with diabetes appear to have either problems absorbing or more likely uh, impaired renal conservation. And so they get into trouble with that.